Blog Talk Radio. Hello and good morning, everyone. I just love theme songs, don't you? My wonderful theme song tells you that it is straight up 8 a.m. Eastern on Wednesday, the 17th of December, and this is Attitude of Gratitude. And my fabulous theme song comes to me and to you from award-winning artist David Martinko. His music is available at redbellymusic.com and sunshadows.net, so be sure to check that out and enjoy some more David all the time, anytime, anywhere you would like to do so. We are wrapping it up with an attitude of gratitude today. And I picked that theme because of the holiday time. Here on the live program, it is the Christmas season. And as such, people are doing so much out there. They're baking and shopping and sending cards and visiting people and drinking eggnog and decorating their homes. And they're doing so much. Some of it because they really enjoy it. Some of it because it's obligatory. I mean, let's face it, a lot of people think, well, it's the holidays. I have to do this. I don't think I've heard that once if I've heard it 20 times. I've got to do this. It's the holidays. I've got to do that. It's the holidays. And they're putting the finishing touches because Christmas is one day, one day away. Not really. It is one week from tomorrow, according to the live show. I just want to stress that. And as a result, a lot of finishing touches are being put into place. One of the biggest and most amazing finishing touches you can put on any day, any moment, any phrase, any visit, any gift, any meal, is the attitude of gratitude. Wrap it up with the attitude of gratitude. All the work you're doing, all the stuff that you're creating, all the memories, all the beautiful scenery, everything that you're giving everybody, wrap it up with an attitude of gratitude. Make that the final thing you do, okay? So let's look at the cookies, for instance. Cookies are wonderful, wonderful things to give people. And everybody loves getting something homemade. So whether it's a cookie or it's a blanket or it's a piece of jewelry or perhaps it's a wreath that you can hang on your front door. There's a lot of really creative people out there. Give it with gratitude. Wrap it up with an attitude of gratitude. Put the gratefulness in your gift, in your giving, in that moment, and pass it on to that person or that animal. could be your pet, could be a shelter pet, could be a neighbor pet. You walk every day and you say, oh, there's a dog right there. Bam, hand the dog a biscuit. Wrap it up with an attitude of gratitude. Wrap up your holiday shopping with an attitude of gratitude. I don't know about you, but I used to work in retail. And it was always a pleasure to wait on everybody and hand them. The place I worked at had pink bags. That was their signature. So every time somebody bought something, it went into a pink bag. So you'd hand the pink bag to them and thank you very much. Not only was I grateful that I had the opportunity to wait on them, but I was grateful that they bought something from the store. See, we were retail stores. We didn't sell stuff. The store didn't have any reason to exist. So as a result, I was very grateful for the customers, very grateful when they came in and spent time at our store and shopped. So wrap up your shopping with an attitude of gratitude. Say something to that clerk, pleasant and memorable, even if it is, thank you so much, I appreciate you. See, we hear thank you a lot. It's almost like words that don't resonate any longer. We have to say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you add a little something more to it, show your gratitude, You're going to be amazed at the impact that has. If the clerk has a name tag, call them by name. Thank you, Susie. Thank you, Kylie. Thank you, Annette. I appreciate you. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Frank. I appreciate you. There's a there's a a a bagger at one of the local grocery stores that I shop at. His name is Gene, and actually, I think his name is Eugene, and he's. He's a memorable kind of a fellow. He, he will smile at you if you smile at him first. He's not always smiling, but I think it's just because I, he doesn't think to. Well, I call him Gene Gene the Baggin' Machine because he's just, when you do that, he kind of gets this uh, giggle going. 
<laughs> and I'm laughing because I do get the biggest kick out of him. Whenever I see Gene, I remind him of how grateful I am for him. And he could be doing absolutely nothing but standing there. Seriously, literally just taking up space. Hey, Gene, good to see you, man. How's it going? Or I go, Gene, Gene, the bag and machine. And all the other the cashiers and everybody laugh because it really is amazing to watch his face light up because somebody took the time to recognize him. And whenever I leave, I make sure that I give him a pat on the back and say, thank you, Gene, I really appreciate you. I wrap up that moment. I wrap up that time that I spend at the grocery store with an attitude of gratitude. Now, it's very genuine. I mean, I really do mean it. I'm not trying to butter his bread. He's, he's just the sweetest person in the world. But I mean it from my heart. But what it does for his heart, I would imagine, is incredible. Sometimes people that work in positions where we think it might be a menial task, such as bagging groceries, I'm going to tell you, that's no menial task. And I take those people to task because I am, you know, a perfectionist when it comes to how I want my groceries bagged. And they're trained. Grocery baggers are trained. I don't know if you know this or not, but they literally do put them through, like, grocery bagging, you know, 101. But they're trained to do things in ways that don't work for me. So I have to retrain them every time I go through the line. Please don't make that bag so heavy. Please don't put, you know, all eight pounds of butter in the same bag. It makes that bag eight pounds. It makes it heavy for me to lift. And, they, you know, it's God love them. They're trained to put you know, refrigerated with refrigerated and box with box and canned with canned. Well, I retrain them. And oddly enough, out of all the people that I retrain so that I can lift those bags once I get them home is Gene. I don't have to retrain Gene. Gene looks at me and goes, oh, yeah, you can't carry a heavy bag. Oh, yeah, you want me to distribute this weight evenly. Oh, yeah, and, and, and I'm totally blown away. But I think that one of the reasons Gene remembers my grocery order and the way I shop, because I'm not there every day and I'm not there every week, is because I've taken the time to form a bond with him. I've taken the time to be sincerely interested in who he is. And I ask him, how are you doing, Gene? And what, what's the best movie you saw last week? And, you know, did you have a good supper last night? And how's your cat? And whatever else. I mean, you know, we dialogue. But it, it's he is grateful that I include that gratitude in my interaction with him. And I'm grateful that he remembers me and takes care of me and knows how I need my groceries bagged so that it's efficient for me and that it works for me and my shoulders and my arms and whatever else. By wrapping up our interactions with an attitude of gratitude, it has created and generated, you know, a friendship of sorts. If I see him out in the parking lot gathering carts, we have, a, we have a chat. I mean, we don't stand, and I don't stop him from his work, but I talk to him as I walk by. Or maybe he's walking in with a row of carts, and we chat as we walk in. Because with me and my walker and he and his row of carts, it, it's about the same speed, so it works out really well. It's like going down the freeway next to a car that's driving the same rate of speed as you are. It kind of goes, kind of flows, so it's cool. So that is that's just an example of what I mean by wrap it up with an attitude of gratitude. And interestingly enough, you can do that any time of the year. It doesn't have to be the holidays to do that. And it doesn't have to be the grocery store. It can be the person that waits on you at the dentist. It can be the individual that waits on you at the bank. It can be the person that you're standing next to in line at the fabric store. That person. Wrap up that interaction with an attitude of gratitude. As well as the gifts and the cards that people give. This is Hanukkah is in full swing right now. Kwanzaa is going to be starting shortly. Christmas, as I said, is almost upon us. When you put the finishing touches on whatever it is you're doing for your holidays, do it with the gratitude. Put your gratitude into that. That way, if you're handing somebody a box of chocolates or you're handing somebody a chocolate-colored you know, Afghan, or you bought somebody a chocolate-colored car. I heard there are cars. The color this year for certain cars is chocolate-colored. kind of anxious to see that. Sounds like it could be pretty cool. So the idea is whatever you're giving, it's how you're giving it more than what you're giving it. That's the main thrust behind this conversation today. Give a compliment, that's great. Give a gift, that's great. Give whatever, a smile, that's great. But if you're wrapping it up with an attitude of gratitude, it's how you're presenting it. That's what they're going to remember. They're going to remember how you did it. 
It's called style. It's called panache. It's called personality. <clears throat> Call it what you will. But it really is more your attitude. And it's having that attitude of gratitude that really makes whatever you're doing for the holiday, whatever you're doing for that shopping trip, whatever you're doing for whatever, that's what makes it work. That's what makes it absolutely positively glow. That's what makes you memorable. That's what makes that person feel important. And I want to stress that, especially in this time frame, this holiday time frame of the year. There's so much stress, so much tension, so much fear that they didn't do it right. Did I get the right gift? And there's going to be a lot of people open up their gifts on Christmas morning and go, really, really, this is what you got me, really? And if you've ever been around somebody like that, and I do have to admit, when I was a child, I had a horrid time being grateful, horrible time being grateful, basically because when I'd ask for something and it was sitting on the shelf right next to what they got me, it was like, well, if that was sitting right there and this was sitting right here, why didn't you get me what I asked for? It was right there. So my logical brain couldn't wrap my head around the gratitude of it all. I, I do have to say I've I've mellowed a lot in my age, and I've understood what it really, really means to be grateful. I've understood what it means to appreciate what somebody does for you. I've understood what I've come to understand. Let me speak more plainly or more correctly. I've come to understand how important it is to be in that attitude of gratitude, how important it is to give that, how important it is to receive with gratitude, how important it is not for any other reason but the fact that that means we're operating out of love. In this time frame, everybody in the world is looking for peace. They're looking for joy. They're looking for love. It starts with our gratitude. When we can wrap our anything we do up with an attitude of gratitude, you are in that moment of love. You're in that moment of sharing. You're cultivating that peace. Really, it's bringing it all together, kind of like the wrapping and the tape and the bows. It brings it all together when you wrap it up with an attitude of gratitude. That is why I chose this today. That is why I enjoy spending time delivering this program to people. Because even though this kind of like starts the day for a lot of folks, because it's 8 a.m. Eastern every Wednesday, it just kind of wraps up that thought process. I don't know about you, but I finish this show and I walk away feeling fantastic because I feel grateful for everybody that listens, grateful for the support that this show has received and will continue to receive, grateful for the opportunity to share and dialogue, and grateful for the growth that being grateful, (laughs) the Department of Redundancy Department, being grateful for the growth that being grateful has brought into my life, and I hope it's brought some gratitude into your life as well. So I'm going to wrap up the show with an attitude of gratitude, saying I'm grateful for everybody that pays attention to the show, that supports it, that follows it. And, of course, by going to blogtalkradio.com forward slash perspective power and signing up to be part of the show. It doesn't cost anything, and you can even schedule (laughs) reminders. It's kind of fun. I appreciate that. I also appreciate the fact that people go to the Facebook page of facebook.com forward slash perspective power and comment and, and leave messages and forward and share the notifications of this show. Fantastic. I'm grateful for the fact that award winning musician David Martinka has taken the time to put together the music for all the shows on this network, actually. Find his music at redbellymusic.com and sunshadows.net. I am grateful that people follow my WordPress blog, my website, which is Annette Rochelle Aben. .wordpress.com. I'm grateful that people buy the books that I've written and published. They are available through my Author Central page at Amazon, which is amazon.com forward slash author forward slash Annette Rochelle Aben. I think if you order today, the 17th of December, you might still get them in time for Christmas. And I'm grateful, 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 ever, ever grateful that you have the most wonderful holiday you can possibly have And whatever you do, remember to wrap it up with an attitude of gratitude.